Hi, welcome to Midwest Magic Cleaning. My name is Acid Wash Bellbottoms, harbinger of your worst jeans nightmare. This is episode two of us saving a destroyed home. This house was the remnant of a hoarder. It had been through a fire and has many, many broken pieces, holes in walls, destroyed floors, and just a slew of problems. A slew, I say. An amount of problems that can only be quantified as a slew. Now, normally you see me cleaning up extreme messes like hoarder houses. However, the woman who lives here is actually a very good cleaner. There wasn't a lot of cleaning we actually had to do, except for in the first episode where we had to remove several large mouse nests, some things that she was just too overwhelmed to get to, and I honestly can't blame her. It was pretty bad. But outside of those, the whole house is actually kept in really good condition. So in today's episode, we're going to go a step further than just getting her house back in order. We're going to fix a whole bunch of stuff and completely transform her kitchen. It seriously is kind of mind-blowing when you see these before and after pictures. But first, I want to start on this front door because there are some problems here that are actually functional. There's about a three quarter of an inch gap between the door and the frame, and it's not something that can be fixed by just manipulating the hinges like you'd normally do. The door is many, many decades old. It's shrunken over time from heat and cold. The house is settled to the point that unless we completely rebuilt the frame, it's just kind of trashed. So we're going to do a cheap fix on this until the door can be replaced. I'm going to triple weather strip this. I put two quarter inch black rubber weather strips on the inside of the frame on the top and the side and then I'm going to follow that up with putting a quarter inch soft weather strip along the door itself. That'll make the door airtight and kill the breeze that was coming through it before. As you can see it was covered in duct tape to keep that breeze at bay. But we're going to get rid of all that duct tape and do the weather strip thing. But we're going to go a step further because the glass is actually not seated well in the door and the only way to get it out is to take it apart and this door is so old that if we take apart the framing that holds in the windows we're not going to get it back together again so I'm going to silicone that glass from the outside the door is not used anyway so rather than have globs of silicone that can be visible from inside the house we're going to do it from the outside so suck it also the locks are way out of place and they don't quite work so I'm going to put a sliding lock on the upper right hand corner just to hold it closed for the time being. We don't have a lot of money to work with here, so we're going to work with what we have and spend as little money as humanly possible. The whole point of this series is to kind of show how we can transform a place on as little money as possible. Now, because you guys watch the channel, that gives me YouTube ad income, and I'm going to reinvest that income into materials to get this house back into shape. So, for instance, we're going to buy them curtains, curtain rods. We spent about 500 bucks on paint. We're getting them a little bit more storage and then we're going to fix some massive holes in drywall especially in the kitchen when you see those holes it's kind of mind-blowing but what we're not going to do is some hgtv thing where people are like let's spruce up our kitchen our budget is eighty-five thousand dollars." the hell out of here with your eighty-five thousand dollar kitchen we're going to fix this up in a way that any person can with elbow grease and spin kicks baby mm-hmm I don't know why I did the mm-hmm thing, but you just got mm-hmm right in your face. Right exactly in your face hole. Now, while I'm working on the door, Jason's in the kitchen wiping down the walls and the ceiling because even though they cleaned that before, like after they originally had the fire in the kitchen, we still need to get off as much dirt and grime as possible so that whenever we put the primer and the paint on, it actually sticks. Once he's done with that, we're going to cut some pieces of drywall. Now, fortunately, we didn't have to buy any drywall. The husband actually had a small collection of drywall sheets so we just jacked one of those and cut some patches out of that. Patches are pretty easy to do though I kind of suck at it. You just want to cut the patch itself slightly smaller than the hole. Now I slightly have this particular clip out of order and I'm too lazy to change it but the way you determine that hole is you actually cut the existing hole into a square so you're actually making the hole in the drywall bigger. Then you just screw the patch into place, put some drywall mud over it, put some tape over that, and then mud it all together. Now you'll see me doing this and I'm not going to get super specific on how to do it because I'm terrible at it. My apologies to all drywall people for the horrible job you'll see me doing. So if you want to learn how to do these, they're actually super easy to do. I would just look up a video on YouTube that specifically shows you how to do this. Other people can explain it way, way better than me and definitely demonstrate it way better than me.
me. One thing you'll also notice while I'm doing this is that that door frame is so shot and in such bad condition. I'm going to rebuild that in another video. I really wanted to do it for this video so that everything was perfect or as perfect as I could get it. But I drive a Camaro and I couldn't fit seven foot long boards in there. I need two seven foot ones and then one that's like four feet long. But yes, I will be building a new frame for that. They're super easy to do as well. But you can see that on a further episode because we're going to do a lot with this house. If you're ever doing this, especially if you know you're going to paint while you have the drywall mud out, fill in all your nail and screw holes. If there are any cracks around the room, fill that. It's one of those things where since you already have the materials out, you might as well do all those jobs at the same time. For instance, in this kitchen, there was a moose with a big dent in the side. So I just drywall mudded the moose dent. It didn't make the kitchen look any better, but the moose was appreciative. He was like, thank you for putting on the drywall spackling on my moose body. You're welcome, moose. Now I must go frolic in the forest. Wee. Bye, talking moose. Bye, drywall guy. Once we have all the drywall mud on, we're going to leave that overnight. You don't necessarily have to leave it for a full 24 hours, but you do need it to be there for a couple of hours to let it completely dry all the way through. Then you're just going to sand that level. You don't sand it level with the wall. You just sand out all the high spots and try to even out the low spots to try to make it appear like one big flat wall. I highly recommend you get a shop vac with a good filter in it. That way you can hold the shop vac hose in one hand and sand with the other and not get dry drywall dust all over your kitchen. Sanding is by far the worst part of drywall patching, so anything that you can do to not make yourself look like a powdered donut is a good thing. Now while you're watching me do this, let me plug a couple places that you can follow us on. Aside from here on YouTube, one of the more important places is Facebook. We had a ton of people stealing our videos, and so I finally just gave in and started up the Facebook page. And we recently got to where we can monetize that. So between here on YouTube, 
YouTube and on Facebook, that's how we can afford to do some of these turnarounds and makeovers on houses and fixes and things like that. We also have a merchandise shop that's got a whole bunch of ridiculous clothing and coffee mugs and all the stuff you'd expect a merch shop to have. Live barking wolves, barking, snapping, biting wolves. You can buy a box of those with like MMC shaved into their wolf fur. And then we also have a members only section. There are three tiers to that. There's like a $1.99 tier. It's just for people who want to support the channel and help us out with what we do. There's a $4.99 section that gets an extra video every week. Then there's a top tier that I, I won't even mention because it's insane and everyone who's a member of that is also insane in a good way, I suppose. But all of those things are linked in the description of this video. And that's all I have to say about that, son. Now, one thing to keep in mind as we're fixing and transforming this place, we are in no way attempting to make this perfect, nor do we claim that we're an expert on anything that we're doing here. We're just a couple guys who like to help people who need it and typically can't afford it. We do all this stuff for free and our goal is just to make this house livable again, as well as something that they can be proud of. So anytime we're painting, we're using the owner's chosen colors. We're matching the decorations that we buy to their style. And we try to keep in mind above everything functionality. So for instance, if they need more storage, we're going to buy decorations or furniture that gives them more storage. If they love coffee and they've got a broken coffee maker, we'll get them a new one. If their professional wrestling ring has a broken rope, we will re-rope those and then promptly stone cold stunner them. Because that's how we roll, son. And now it's time for the first coat of primer. Get ready, baby, because here it comes. I am a primer master. They call me Optimus Primer. And I'm like, primer? I barely knew her. hi -o! Anyway, we're using Kills Primer. And the reason we're using it is because we have so much staining and soot and 100-year-old wallpaper paste. We need a primer that not only bonds well to the surface, but we need one that fights stains. And Kills is the best at doing that. Normally, Normally, on just a normal everyday paint job, if we had to prime it, we'd only need one coat of this. But this room is so bad, we're going to use two. And we could have even gone as far as using three, but two ended up working. We prime the entire room, ceiling and all, twice. And then we put two coats of paint on it. And it, it turned out pretty good. You'll see in the before and after pictures here in just a bit. So be patient, man. I don't put up with non-patience, with unpatience. I'm not putting up with it. Now, you'll notice on some parts of this wall, there's still a little bit of wallpaper left. If you watched episode one, you saw me taking some of this off. But about halfway through it, I realized that I likely was dealing with asbestos. So I stopped peeling it. I did get off any remaining wallpaper that was too loose to work with. But anything that was nice and adhered to the wall, I ended up leaving on. I'm not equipped for asbestos removal or lead removal or anything like that. So our best option, once I found out what I was dealing with, was to leave it alone and and paint over the top of it. But by the time I figured that out, most of the wallpaper was gone anyway, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And I was all like, asbestos, more like as worstus. Please don't call me as worstus. I'm just some lonely wallpaper. Shut up, talking wallpaper. Okay. One thing you'll want to keep an eye on is the ceiling. We put one coat of kills on this, and it looked dramatically different, like shockingly different. I was really surprised at how well it covered up soot stains. When we painted the second coat on it, it looked so good we were considering just leaving it. We're like, man, that looks so good. We don't even know if we want to put ceiling paint on it. Then when we put ceiling paint on it, it turned yet another shade of white. So every time you see us go over this ceiling, you'll be amazed at how much whiter it gets every time. Like by the third coat, it's so white, its last name was Cumberbatch.
The hardest part of this paint job was the paneling, and it always is, because they've got these little fake black strips in them that's supposed to represent like um, space between wood planks, and they're really hard to paint. The trick for me is if you can get primer on those somewhat thick but not runny, it will create a surface for paint to adhere to so you don't need to put in as much effort. So in other words, the first time you put it on, you're going to do a little bit of work to get the primer to stick to it, but after that, the paint paint will stick to the primer really easy and you can pretty much get away with just a roller but the first time you put it on you pretty much almost have to have a brush to get in there or a really thick napped roller. Paneling is also notoriously slick and so you can either sand it with a really rough piece of sandpaper like 100 grit 150 grit and then paint primer on it or you can get an adhering bonding primer which will prevent you from having to do that step. That's what we did. The kills that we have is a bonding primer and you just put a thin layer of that on to begin with. That way it can dry really quickly and the second coat of primer that you put on will stick not to the paneling but to the previous coat of primer that you put on it. After that second coat then it's pretty easy. Paint just sticks to the primer and you're good to go but painting the first round of uh, paneling just kind of sucks. If you ever peel wallpaper off and you have a material that's on the wall like this one where it's stained old glue, if you're not able to clean that off, then you're going to want to let your primer sit overnight after you put that first coat on. Because what happens is any old glue or old soft material is going to absorb the primer like a sponge and it's going to swell. But if it sits overnight, that gives it time for all the moisture to evaporate off and it'll create a nice hard surface for you to put your second coat of primer on. Painting is like like 80% preparation and 20% painting. In a perfect world, we would have taken all this drywall down and re-drywalled it and removed the paneling and given them a new floor. But again, like I said in the beginning, this is not like a $30,000, $50,000 remodel. And I'm not a skilled enough drywaller to do work like that. I can do patchwork, but I'm not about to tear out an entire kitchen, mainly because this is a cleaning channel and not rebuild entire kitchens channel. Though admittedly, I will give it to you that there's very little cleaning in this video, but there's even less kitchen building. I actually get that a lot. People will be like, man, I would have just gutted that place and started from scratch. And I'm like, awesome. Money's not imaginary. So we'll just patch and paint. Though if you'd like to tear out and rebuild their kitchen, you are always welcome to come with me on these. I'll give you their PayPal information and we'll just go straight up full hog on this sucker. Man, is that ceiling not nuts? Look at that. That's all soot stains and kills is just going over that like it was nothing. We said a lot of phrases that started with the word holy while priming that ceiling. And again, every time we put another layer on, it just blew our minds. Once we had the kitchen completely primered, we left for the night to let that all cure overnight. Now normally you can leave a primer until it's dry and then add an extra hour to that in order for it to cure, maybe a couple hours at the most. Sometimes you can even get away with just letting it dry and not curing and it, it's fine. But we wanted this to cure overnight because the material underneath it was so destroyed and stained. We wanted to make sure that that primer formed a shell over that. Now fortunately, the second 
second coat of primer or the second coat of paint always goes way faster than the original first coat. I'm going to speed it up to make it look even faster than that, but second coats always go quick. This was a day where we finally had cell signal so I could do a live for the people in the top tier of the member section. It's called Team Filth, but that, that second coat day was really awesome because not only did it go fast, but it just felt relaxing because we didn't have to be as tedious on our edging. We didn't have to worry about putting on a gigantic amount of primer because your first coat you got to put a lot on typically the second coat you just slap on so we just spent the day primering out this room and shooting the breeze with team filth it was really nice because we didn't have to worry about any sanding all the drywall was already patched my horrible mud job was covered up with primer and there was no moose in the kitchen at all on that day there was nary a single moose the kitchen was virtually mooseless it was a veritable smorgasbord of non-moose hey while i've got you guys here could you do me two small favors one is to hit the subscribe button because we're actually working our way toward a million subscribers and that's when we get our gold plaque and really that's that's all i want out of youtube i just want the gold plaque just so i can shove it in my kids faces and make them all jealous because if you can't make your kids cry by making them jealous of awards are you even a parent the second thing is if any of you watch post 10 it's a great channel it's like the most wholesome thing ever i've been watching his channel since he was making a aquarium videos and for any of you who are fans of his you know that's a very very long time i'm like really old school into post 10 if you could drop by one of his videos and just tell him that midwest magic cleaning said hi he'll have no idea what you're talking about because he doesn't know me but i want him to anyway i don't fanboy over hardly anyone but i'd love to meet post 10 one day him and al blades i really want to meet al blades and also juggernaut if you're watching this hello shout out to lawn care juggernaut he actually stopped by and congratulated me when I got my silver plaque and I thought that was really cool. I'm pretty positive that if I ever get a chance and I get the time, I could probably do an inside-outside collaboration with him. I just need to free up the time and contact him and see what he thinks. And I also wanted to take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, which is no one, because I don't do sponsorships. If you ever see me doing a sponsorship, it means two things. One, I've tried their product and I genuinely like it. And two, they've paid me a buttload of money like a ridiculous embarrassing amount of money joking aside i actually don't do sponsors for a reason i don't want them to have their hands in our business like yours and my business if i make a weird joke that comes off wrong or if i say something they don't like then in my eyes they have the right to come in and say look this makes us look bad we need you to edit out this section and i don't want a company being able to have that sort of power or pull in any of our content so every single thing that you see me use on the channel I use because I personally like it and they work and I don't want to be put in a position where like Jim Bob's butt cream has me start using their products on the channel because they're paying me to use Jim Bob's butt cream and everybody knows I make homemade butt cream out of two parts butt and one part cream that recipes on me for free you are welcome So day one, we did repairs and drywall patches and all that. Day two was primer. Day three was second coat primer. On the fourth day, we were finally ready to paint. Now, fortunately, with paint, you don't have to let that cure overnight. You just need it to dry, and then you can put on your second coat. So we did all the painting in one day. She told me she wanted some kind of classical grays and whites, just nice neutrals that were classy. So I found a gray called chromed. It's a Dutch boy paint, and chromed is the the name of the gray. It's slightly on the blue side, just slightly, but they also consider it a true neutral. And then I just got a classic eggshell white for the upper walls. Now I know some people think that's boring, but the way you handle that is you use your decorations to break up those colors. So people aren't looking at the walls, they're looking at your decorations. In a previous video, we did really bold colors because that's what the owner wanted. She had two-tone green in the kitchen and two-tone orange in the living room. And 
then two-tone green in the bedroom again. And this one, we're kind of going the opposite direction, but just like I said in that previous video, that the colors are always perfect if they're what the owner wants. I don't like it whenever people try to follow some HGTV fad. I don't like it whenever they try to paint according to what they think their friends and family will like. I like it whenever they pick out things that they personally enjoy because they're the ones who live with it. They're the ones who will get the direct mood change that comes from freshening up a room or repainting a room. Now what this particular gray did for this room was it set kind of a color palette. Because it tended to lean toward the blue side, the cool side, it matched well with the wood of her cabinets. And she's also got kind of a pastel bluish green set of tiles above her sink. And normally that would be kind of a mishmash of colors that you wouldn't really think of. But strangely, we based that all on a clock that she liked. She had a really cool looking just round clock that had blues and earth tones in it. And she really, really loves the clock. So since she loved that, we matched the rest of the room to that. And that's what I'd suggest that you do if you're ever redesigning a room. If you have a picture you love or a couch you love, some feature of a room that you're really into, it's totally okay to build the room out around that thing. That to me is what gives a room personality. For instance, my office is based around all the bodies of all the Draculas I've slayed. I see a Dracula, I slay it, I bring it home to my office, and then I build the decor of my office around that trophy. So my office says this is a place to work and also I'm not putting up with Draculas. You come in my office, you don't be a Dracula. And people know that just from my decor. Now we did the first and second coats of the trim first. And one of the reasons we did that was a matter of room. All of our stuff that we used to paint the room was in the center. So we were in a position where we needed to do two coats of trim just so we can get all the material out of the way so we could have room to walk. Then after that dried, we can do the rolling, let it dry, then second coat roll, then finish off the ceiling and we were all done. Also, it's still driving me nuts every time I see that door frame, so I totally get it if it's driving you nuts too. Again, it will be fixed, we'll build a new one, we'll paint it up to match the kitchen, it'll be fly, it'll be funky, fresh, dope fly. You just gotta be patient, man. It's only episode two, be patient. Now, if the channel ever gets big, like Ari Katarina big, or Detail Geek big, Al Blades big, I'm setting a long-term goal to hire some contractors to come in and help me so that I can focus on the cleaning part. Like let's say we go into a hoarder's place and the floors are destroyed and the walls are all moldy and they've got leaks and broken sinks and whatnot. I can do my thing with the extreme cleanups like you're used to. Then I can bring in a dedicated contractor to help me replace floors and walls and sinks and all the things they need to get their home back into not just livable condition, but really nice condition. Because let's face it, a lot of the TV shows that focus focus on hoarding, kind of fixate on the drama. And I get it. I know how TV shows work. I know how that operates. But we're not TV and we don't answer to ad people. So we can just make our own program where we go in and help people. And that's the whole point of the show. We don't have to show anybody having a breakdown. We don't have to follow their journey. We don't have to go on a roller coaster ride of emotions as we clean up a house. We just show up, clean it, fix it, show the pretty aftermath, give the homeowners a, a really nice surprise, and then we all go our separate 
separate ways knowing that we helped people. That may or may not be obtainable, but you always have to have goals. And I think that's one of my bigger goals is to walk into a pit of despair and just obliterate it with hope. Oh, one big thing while I've got your ears. Because the channel's grown so big so fast, there's a lot of people who don't know where I'm from. I'm from South Central Illinois. I get probably 50 requests per week for me to come to another state and help people out. I will be able to do that at some point in the future, but I am I'm nowhere near ready to do that just yet. Right now, I do this all locally. Almost all of the houses that I've helped so far in this channel have been within like a 30 mile radius of me. So I really apologize. I can't go to like Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan, or even as far as like Chicago. That's way far away from me. But at some point I will just subscribe to the channel. And at some point I'll put out an announcement and say, hey, we're finally able to travel. I'll be in Michigan or wherever for the next two weeks. And I'll give people the town location and all that. And then I'll set up traveling and helping people across the country. That's kind of the ultimate goal. But for right now, I'm really sorry, but I can't go to another state. Even if you paid my my travel and food and all that stuff. It's not a matter of money. It's a matter of time. And right now I, I have very little time. Another question I get a lot is someone will explain how their family is in a hoarding situation and how do they tackle the mess. So they ask me for advice and my advice basically boils down to take it three feet at a time. Don't clean the kitchen, clean a three foot section and counter. Don't clean the bathroom, clean the bathtub. Just one little thing at a time until the whole room's done. Just take it three feet at a time. The reason I'm saying it here is because I get asked a lot, dozens of times a week. Between here, Facebook, and TikTok, we have about a million followers. And so my DMs are constantly filled with people asking questions like that, which is totally fine. I just don't have time to answer them all. I basically go about 100 hours a week. That's not an exaggeration between cleaning and fixing houses and producing the videos and narrating. And then I spend at least two hours a day flexing in my bathroom mirror, just admiring, just flexing and saying to myself, look at all that huge. How do you even live with all that huge? I just do me. I just do. My wife absolutely hates it. All right, we're now closing in on the end of day four, and this is the last of the painting. Once we get this second coat of paint on and the ceiling paint, we leave for the day, let that dry overnight, and then the next day we come back and that's when we do the decorations and all the wrap-up work. I love doing second coats because they're so fast and it's such a dramatic improvement over the first coat. If you've ever painted and you've wondered why it just looks kind of crappy and shoddy, there's a pretty good chance that you just put one coat on it 
and looked at it and was like, that's good enough. It looks fine. Then when it dried, you could start to see the see-through spots. And the reason I assume that with a lot of bad paint jobs is because that's the way I used to be. I, I wouldn't think that a second coat would make that much of a difference, but it makes a dramatic difference. So if you're ever painting, do the second coat. You may be worn out. The idea may be sucky. And you're, you may be thinking the last thing I want to do is repeat the paint job that I just did. But after you get the second coat on, it, it makes such a huge difference that you'll be glad that you did. The first big piece of furniture I got her was, it's basically like a bookshelf. It's just a regular everyday shelf that stands about six-ish feet tall, give or take. The shelves are removable and they're adjustable. And I got it for two reasons. One, I wanted to give her more storage, but two, I wanted to put something in front of that breaker box. I tried to get a nice big canvas piece of artwork to put over it, but it needed to be at least 24 inches tall. And in order to center it on that wall, it would have needed needed to be 36 to 40 inches wide. The only place I had to shop at was Walmart because again, we, we live in a small area and there's not much around except Walmart. And the one I went to had zero pictures. Most of the ones I go to in other towns have a section where they've got like little canvas prints and stuff, but this one didn't. So instead I got the piece of furniture. We used that to store all the stuff that she had been storing on top of her fridge. And it happened to fit right in front of that breaker box. Not enough to fully hide it, but enough to make a difference. Then as it turned out, that clock that I mentioned earlier that she liked so much, her toddler pulled the hands off of it. And fortunately, at that Walmart was the exact same clock. They had one. So we went ahead and got that and replaced her broken clock. Because that would have been pretty unfortunate if our whole idea was to base the kitchen collars and decor around that clock and then find out we can't use it or we have to hang it up on the wall and it just doesn't tell time. It lost the one piece of functionality that it was meant to do. So yeah, we got super lucky with that. The second thing I got her was a five foot by seven foot area rug to cover up that really bash in floor and then I found another runner type of rug that was the same exact design that I could put in front of her stove and washer and dryer. Again, if one day I'm able to hire contractors, flooring is a big thing that I want to be able to include in these makeovers. But right now the only thing we can do with it is just cover it with an area rug. But it, it works. I also found some gray curtains that pretty much matched the gray that was on the wall. And then I found a sort of teal curtain that matched her clock that I put on the front door. Then we found a set of three mirrors, decorative mirrors that were white and three that were black. So I just hung those up in a random pattern just to fill space on one wall. And it actually looked pretty cute and kind of artsy. But that's it for the kitchen. We're going to go back there this coming week to do the living room. And then there's a spare bedroom that we want to knock out real quick and then a main bedroom. So there will definitely be an episode three, possibly a four, and possibly a five. So we're not done with this house yet. So stay tuned, there, there will be more coming from this home because the ceilings from the living room were almost as bad as the ones in the kitchen. So just painting the ceiling in the living room would be worth it even if that's all we did. But it's not, so shut up. Anyway, thanks for watching. Members, I'll see you on Wednesday. Everybody else, I'll see you next weekend. Later.
Thank <laughs> you.